So today we're going to hear from Pat Dale, the fire chief. Uh, we actually, I had the opportunity to hear this presentation at Redmond Executive Association. It's a lot of great information. He has been, believe it or not, in the fire service industry for over 40 years, right out of high school. Most of his career has been in Washington. He has tried to uh, retire a few times unsuccessfully. He retired from Olympia in January of 2015 and then went, in, uh, went to a different department, Grand Fire Department, retired there in 2017, joined our department in May of 2022. So um, he's not very good at retiring, but he is good at his job. He's done a ton of training. Uh, he has a great attitude, brings a lot of um, good information, and today he's gonna talk to us about the levy that the fire department is doing now. Thank you. Great introduction, thank you Amber, for pointing out my failures. <laughs> Big failure at retirement. You love your job, that's why you keep coming back. That's what it is, yeah, and I'm a failure at retirement. Thanks for having me here. I think I was here about a year ago, right Ron? And the message is similar, but it's a lot more specific now. I'm here to talk to you specifically about a levy. So that, I think I might have mentioned in sort of a spoiler alert a year ago that, that might be coming <coughs> Here we are to talk about the levy. I'm going to have some statistics here. It has nothing to do with cover up or support in the way you just heard about <laughs> that. And relative to that. Good, good and good. it sort of, Amber sort of gave away the rest of what I was going to say. I have about a year and a half here. Thanks for having me in Redmond. I love it here. Before that, it was about 41 years now, as it, as it is, in a place that, here's what I would have said, at the place that hosts the highest peak in the Cascades at 14,411, where is that? Yeah. That's Mount Rainier, Seattle area. So it's Kent Fire Department, where I started, suburb of Seattle, about 17 years, 17 years in the capital city of Olympia, and then five years in a fire district that was very similarly situated to Redmond, which is a fire district also. So that's the experience I bring to this conversation. Thanks for having me. I have about 20 minutes, so I'll keep that down to about 45. I'll do the best I can. I could go. Dad said that he'll stay afterwards for as long as everybody wants to ask questions. As long as people want to stay, I'm happy to stay. I could go on and on about your Redmond Fire Department. The people are fantastic. So this is about growth and the levy. <clears throat> Of course, I use a slide deck just to remind me as I look at it what, what I wanted to talk about at one point. I, I might not be in the view of your recording as I move around. <laughs> Sorry about that. So just to briefly describe our fire district, the area that we serve, it's, we serve not only the city of Redmond, but also Klein Falls, which serves Eagle Crest, Terrebonne, and unincorporated areas of Deschutes and Jefferson County. 133 square miles for fire suppression, fire control, and then 294 square miles of an ambulance service area. We provide ambulance service, transports to hospitals also. That's a, that's a huge area. It's, it's different than my experience from the state just north of here. By the way, you, you now know that it was Washington State. Am I okay here? <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. You're fine. Thanks for having me. It's about almost 50,000 residents that we serve, and last year, 7,126 calls to 911 that we went and. Well, if you want the shorter version of my presentation, Amber, to take less time, our service is we help people. Our phone number is 911. Are there any questions? <laughs> that's, the, that's the Reader's Digest version of what we do. I'm going to take a few more minutes here. All right, and to continue on, we have four staff stations. One, is the, one of them is the airport right here, downtown Redmond, Klein Falls, and Terrebonne. 58, so I say operations in this slide, a term that's uh, first responders, firefighter paramedics, firefighters. They're all the same name for the same people. We have 58 of those that ride the medic units and fire trucks. Six administrative, two fire and life safety, two training, and five board directors. Three of them are here today to provide governance and finance over our district. Here's a, a slide that I accidentally went through too fast. It's our mission statement. I won't 
necessarily, well, I probably will read it because it's important. This came from a, a strategic planning process that I recently led our organization through. So we have a five-year strategic plan. And in that process, the 16 stakeholders we had in the, in the planning process came up with this mission statement. And it, they, they really spent a lot of time with this, so the words do have meaning. Red and Fire and Rescue is a family. That word was chosen carefully, as most of them were. Public safety professionals whose mission is to provide exceptional customer service dedicated to saving lives and property through prevention, <coughs> preparedness, problem solving, and effective emergency response to all members of our community. That's our mission statement. Whoops. Now, it's about growth. So, is there growth coming to Redmond still? Is that a leading question? I have to assume a lot of you have lived in Redmond for a long time. True? And there's been a lot of growth. Would it, would be, would it be accurate if I explain, describe that growth as explosive in this area? So with the, the data, thanks for the joke of the day, that I have is over the last 10 years, the population has grown in our fire district, not just the city of Redmond, 26% growth over 10 years. In the same 10 years, it's been a 68% increase in call volume. And that's what I've seen in my 40 plus years at the three other agencies. It's very similar. As a population comes in, that is not the statistic that causes a demand in our service. It's the calls for to 911 that come along with it that are three to one. You see, that's about three times the increase in calls for service to population growth. So as population comes in, to be clear, that's not exactly what causes us, where I'm leading with this is more staffing. We need more people to deliver the service. It's the increase in call volume that's disproportionate to the increase in population. That's what we've experienced in the last 10 years. As I mentioned, we adopted a new strategic plan, a five-year strategic plan that our board adopted. And this stakeholder group that included citizens, there was a citizen survey and then internal survey. The top weaknesses of our organization identified as staffing and funding, one and two. Does that sound familiar to everybody? <laughs> of course. And then recruitment and retention. Let me pause on that. Again, in my 41 years of experience in an agency this size, 10 years ago for sure, if we advertised, recruited the uh, that we were going to hire new firefighter paramedics, we would get, I would say, 1,000 to 1,500 applicants. Last year, 30. The whole year. In one recruitment, we had a job announcement. We got 30-some applicants that 10 years ago, that would have been 1,500 applicants. Wow. It's remarkable. And I don't have a... I have some thoughts, but I'm not sure what, what's caused that. Have you experienced that too? It's not just our public sector, but it's uh, remarkable. And I think the pandemic had something to do with it. So recruitment and retention is a weakness. Apparatus costs, of course, and supply chain issues. Those are the top weaknesses of the organization, according to this strategic planning group. We also have a long-range master plan, more in that 20-year range. And then the next bullet Improving response staffing, last year we hired three new positions and we filled seven vacancies. So thank you for your support. And this reminds me to talk about something else I want to chat out with you for just a moment. There's an organization called Insurance Services Office. Has anybody heard of that? Okay. So it's the, the agency that puts a classification rating on fire departments, municipal and district, for their services. So currently Redmond has a three and then a 10 in the rural, rural areas. That number might not mean anything to you at this point, but it's a classification rating on the fire department. The metrics, the biggest ones that improve the, the classification, staffing, number one. Distance, drive time from your place of business or home to a fire station, number two. Number three, water systems. Those are kind of the biggest thing, uh, metrics that affect the classification rating. So with, with adding staffing in this levy that I'm going to talk about in a moment, the 
the biggest portion of it is going to go to adding firefighter paramedics. That's the metric that has the biggest impact, impact on improving the fire classification rating. We, we will go from a three to a two the next time we're re-rated. A three to a two is an improvement and there'll be hundreds of thousands of dollars of savings within our fire district that I described that, that area when we go from a three to a two. So I, I can't tell you what that would be on your home or business, it's commercial and residential, but it's a fact, I've experienced this before. I'm, I'm here to, to impart facts to you and then our board members can give you the vote yes like Gary did with his, with his uh, public safety announcement there. In a similar size district in Washington, an improvement classification, in that case was a four to a three, the homeowners experienced a uh, decrease in their property insurance that outperformed the increase in the levy that I'm going to talk about here soon. Amber, did you want to say something? I was just going to say two things really quick. So okay. after you spoke at, the, at our REA meeting, I looked that up, and 50% of the rating is based on the staffing when they're looking at fire departments. So it is, it is very heavily weighted on the staffing. And the other thing I was going to say is I see homeowners insurance premiums all the time, obviously, with what I do, and they have gotten really really expensive. I mean, there's even, I, I had one um, like two months ago where when the premium came through, I called the agent and the agent said they basically rated it as if they knew that they would not get to the house in time, it was going to burn to the ground. And because there wasn't a close enough fire department, it was out in Jefferson County, but it has become a huge issue with, you know, the rates and, and um, the cost of housing, the insurance is now really, we're seeing really large premiums. You can't even get insurance in most sisters <clears throat> on the uh, western side now. Tollgate, Crossroads, they're, all, they're pretty much, there's one company, Mutual of Human Claw, that will. They're saying they won't maybe even long term. And I don't even know what's going to happen as people that have mortgages out there lose their insurance and there's nothing available. And realistically, that's going to happen to everything that's up against the Cascades because okay. Oregon has no no appetite for fixing its forest and so they're just gonna we're gonna burn communities once a year for the rest of our lives probably and insurance is reflecting that yes so of those oh go ahead ron no, i was just gonna echo what amber said i'm like these property casualties and i've helped a lot of friends in particular um, eagle crest to middle uh redmond and uh, the rates have just been going crazy absolutely crazy it does. So thank you. I'm presenting again over the next couple of weeks, and Amber and Ron are coming with me tonight. So <laughs> thank you. Uh, I will say that, again, facts. I can't say what it would be here. There's Not all carriers use ISO as a, their uh, source for setting their homeowner's insurance rates or, or commercial. Not, not all carriers do that, but what we will do when we're re-rated, we'll do a public safety announcement, a, a campaign to let everyone know that we've just been re-rated. Check with your carrier because you likely will experience a decrease in your property insurance, largely due to staffing. Thank you, Ron and Amber. All right, increasing demand for service. Let me get back to this. So what, what we provide as, as a service, again, in 41 years of experience, what this fire department, Redmond Fire and Rescue, does is amazing. It, it literally, we can go in a day from a aircraft incident accident at the airport here that we serve that to rescuing somebody on the top of Misery Ridge at Smith Rock to a horrific car accident on 97. You might have seen one recently to a heart attack, stroke, ice rescue, water rescue, low angle, high angle. And it's all the same people. They're all cross trained to do the same thing by and large. Now, that is an amazing service that I describe as time sensitive. The early intervention is key to successful outcomes, whether it's medical or fire. Highly technical, that, that range of service from, that I just described to you with the depth of knowledge that our first responders have is remarkable to me still. And staffing intensive. Those things take a lot of, it's a very physically demanding job in, in all of those instances. 
Over the past three years, this was the statistics that I could get that reveal. Is that part of the... <laughs> Over the last three years, we've had a, about a 60% increase in building fires, about a 50% increase in aircraft incidents. Now, those incidents are low, but it, it's increased that amount. Motor vehicle accidents, about 20%, and... Emergency medical service calls about 20% over the last three years. So again, somebody from the city of Redmond, uh, what was his position, Chief Mooney? They told us that in the city of Redmond, four to five new people per day moving into Redmond. What, who, who was that, Tom? But it, that's seven, what he told us. Seven. Yeah. What's that? Seven. Seven? That's what from you've heard? Redmond Economic Development. Okay, seven? Yeah. Okay, it's gone up in the last couple of weeks, Tom. <laughs> thank, you for this, thank you for the statistic. Yeah. Seven people? Seven. Yeah, that's, so again, then, then we look at what we have to be prepared for is to deliver service to a three to one increase in the demand for our service as that population comes in. And I'll tell you, from my view, I've only been here a year and a half, but Redmond Fire and Rescue today is understaffed. That's just the reality, and that's not to lay blame or to even look for that in anybody previous to this day. It's just where we're at, I think. I think I've seen this before. The population goes up fast. We need to catch up with it, and that's where we're at today. So how are we funded? Currently, we, we have really two main options the way that we're funded, and that's a permanent tax levy. This is all based on taxation on real property. So there's a permanent fire levy of $1.75 per $1,000 of, of assessed value of real property. That's fixed by the legislature. We can't ask voters to raise that. It's just fixed is what it is. It would take an act of Congress quite literally to change that. Another option we have is a, a levy, a local option levy. On top of that, that takes voter approval. And right now, 2023 in the black box, we have that permanent levy, $1.75 per thousand of assessed property value. And we have a current local option levy at 27 cents that was approved by voters in 2020. So that's a, a total of $2.02 per $1,000 of assessed value. What we're asking for on November 7th, less than three weeks from today, is to raise, again, we'll still have the permanent levy, but to raise that levy from 27 to 75 cents. That's a 48 cent increase. So that would bring it to $2.50 per thousand of assessed property value. I'm going to talk more about assessed versus market in just a couple slides. This is an image I, I built just to give you a, that literally an image of a, a pie and what portion Redmond Fire and Rescue, the slice of the pie, we make up in, in the contribution of total tax for somebody that lives in the city. So I put it in blue. You can see it from close up or a distance that blue is Redmond Fire and Rescue. When I did this the first time, I did it in red. And our chief financial officer, she said, you know, Pat, red isn't a good thing in finance. <laughs> We're talking about finance here, so I changed it to blue. But it's really the city of Redmond and urban renewal, parks, Redmond Parks, uh, school district, COCC, and Deschutes County. And then you can see the portion that Redmond Fire makes up of the total tax contribution. Here's what it looks like if you're outside the city, unincorporated, very similar. Kind of affected by compression. It goes from 13 in the city to 13% of the total <laughs> tax by here. Interesting visual. Yeah, okay, thanks. <clears throat> Our directors, thank you, approved a resolution to have this on the ballot November 10th <coughs> to ask voters yes or no to approve a levy that really addresses your safety and the safety of the first responders that provide the service. So it's a five-year local option levy. The, what it goes to is it helps add new firefighter paramedics. It addresses recruitment and retention. I mentioned that as a weakness. And it's mostly wages and benefits. Some equipment training, that's mostly when we do hire new firefighter paramedics, we have to provide them with a, a firefighting ensemble and put them through a 12-week academy. So that's the training and, and some equipment. 
what will the local option levy fund? So funding from this levy, that 48 cent increase for $1,000 of assessed value, will, will be used to hire additional firefighter paramedics. First responders, firefighters, that's all this, the same name for the same people. And will enhance recruitment and retention programs, increase the reliability and, and response times, reduce the need to cross staff, and increase the staffing to three firefighter paramedics on the engines. So let me talk about, chat about this slide just a moment. Cross staffing. What that is, it's not cross training. Cross training is good. When we're crossed, all of our members by and large are trained at fire suppression, whether it's wildland, structural fires, hosting an out of control fire, and medical, paramedics. They're cross trained to do both. We deliver that service, whether it's in a medic unit, ambulance looking vehicle, or a fire truck. Cross, cross staffing, however, affects response times negatively. I said we're a time sensitive agency, early intervention, in a fire helps lead to successful outcomes. I, I think we can make sense of that. In medical, like a heart attack or stroke, early intervention leads to successful outcomes. If it's beyond four to six minutes with a, a heart attack, the successful outcomes really start dropping off quickly. And we're not able to meet that response time reliably the way we're currently staffed. So cross-staffing means that, let me use the example of Klein Falls, that station. In that station, most of the time there's three, sometimes two people. There's four vehicles. When 911 receives a call, they answer it in seven seconds, within 30 seconds. Is that about right, Jessica? They dispatch us, and in the station there's a, a tone that goes off, alerts the firefighters. They have to listen to the nature of the call and decide which vehicle they take, the medic unit for medical or fire or fire, depending on the call. In the example of, let me just say, in this example, they go to Eagle Crest for a medical call. And they transport that person to Ben. That happens commonly, St. Charles and Ben. Is the traffic on 97 better today or worse today than it was 10 years ago? <laughs> yeah, laugh here. That can be a three hour turnaround time. So what, what happens in that area out there is now there's no vehicle in service to respond. So when the next person in Eagle Crest calls 911, they will have somebody come, but it's either going to come from downtown, Terrebonne, or sometimes Bend. And the firefighter paramedics in Bend are excellent, but they're going to take a while to get there. When we hire additional firefighter paramedics, if the levy passes, what we'll be able to do is eliminate that cross-staffing and put three people on the fire engine, two people on the medic unit, so that when the second call comes in, you can see necessarily response times will improve greatly. Did I describe that to make sense? Yeah. That's an outcome of passing this levy, is hiring additional firefighter paramedics, necessarily response times will improve. Yes, sir. As you add those staffing levels, how about equipment? Trucks. You Good question. Thank you, sir. Are we gonna add trucks or buildings or fire stations on this levy? No. A levy can be used for staffing. Bonds are what would be the source of revenue for capital needs. And this is not that case. We're understaffed today, so in priority order, we're addressing that first. It's, it's truly not buildings or fire trucks or medic units that respond to address points and help people, it's people. That's, that's what we need first. Thanks for the question. Did I answer your question? Yes, sir. Okay. What is the impact of property owners? I, you see I used the $200,000 assessed value. Please let me just not to, uh, let me just say the difference between assessed value and market value. Assessed value is the value on property that the county assessors place on it so that they can you know, provide taxation amounts. Market value is that agreement between property owners and buyers on what is the current market value that they can get from their home. The average assessed value residential property in our district this year is 215,000. So I used 200 as a round number so you can make sense of that. That's what the taxation is on. With this increase of 48 cents, that would mean a $94 a year increase or $7.83 per month 
on a $200,000 assessed home that I would say, this is not fact, but I would say probably in our, our district, $200,000 assessed value would be about 550 to 580 market value, but you're taxed on 200,000 assessed value. So that's, the, that's what that means to property owners. If it doesn't pass, that's a question. Pat Dale, what happens if it doesn't pass? We'll probably, frankly, have to be out on the ballot again because this is the, the, the source of revenue that we have an option to increase. And if it continues to not pass, then we'll have to have a discussion about how we deliver service. This image I used because I anticipated a question, what is all of the money used for? If this levy passes, well, $94 a year, I used the $100 bill image, and to the penny, this is what the, that revenue would be used for. It's 100% people. It's interesting, on the left side, represents, I used here, nine new firefighter paramedics. That's what, to the penny, that's for their wages, benefits, and pension. On the right side is those colas and increase. An increase in health care and pension has, has gone up a lot. I don't know if you can relate to that, but that's our world. So that's to the penny what, what the funding goes towards. Is that an interesting graphic? I wanted to be prepared for what does the money go for exactly. That's it. Next steps, coming down the home stretch. Just about done. Simple majority, if it passes November 7th, property owners will see uh, an increase in their taxes starting in July of 2024. The current local option levy expires in June of 2025. If it passes this November, this new increased levy rate of 48 cent increase, we will not levy the final year of the 27 cent levy. We won't, we will forgive the final year of the 27 cent levy it will become the new 75 cent levy for the next five years if it passes. If projected, again, again, I said, we'll, we'll, you'll likely see us back out on the ballot again because as population continues to grow, our demand for service is triple that amount and we fall further behind on response times. Response times will continue to worsen if population, come, well, population is coming, we see that, so will the demand for service. That's a fact. Did not give you enough time today. <laughs> I, I tried I to expedite. But please do if you could stay for questions. I'm I will. sure um, I'm sure there are some. So uh, will you guys be coming down Happy at to one o'clock. Thanks for having me. Um, thank you. 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 I would also like to ask you to show support. I have some yard signs in my car, or if I can get your address, if you'd like to put a yard sign at your place of business or home, I'd love to put one out there for you, so let me know too. Thank you, Jessica. Okay, in honor of our speakers today, aspire rather to be a hero than merely appear one. Okay.